Hi everyone, it's Alan with Earth Glow. Welcome back to another candle making video. So this is where I store my fragrances and um, they're in all of these cabinets and oh yeah, some of my boxes as well for shipping. Just a few that I keep down here. And today we're going to be making about a hundred, no not a hundred, over 200 candles. And I'm trying to decide which oils I'm going to use today. I have a lot, a lot, a lot. Usually when I'm making this many candles, I'll just bring the box right up here with, you know, several hundred tins. And I like to just wipe down my workspace so that I know there's no dust or anything. And, um, and I just gradually, gradually start putting out all my tins. And this is something that um, takes up most of the counter space that I have. You'll see if you haven't watched one of these videos yet. Today actually sets a record. Um, I've never, never made more than 200 candles in this space at one time. And <laughs> I'm really excited. Yeah, I was showing that uh, outer wrapping on these tins. You can actually recycle it. You have to take it to a special um, location, but it's very easy to do, just like you would for plastic bags from the grocery store. So I usually start with just taking off all the little wrappings on my tins. And um, I do get these from Alibaba. I'll be doing a video in the future when I order next from them. And then this cardboard, um, I'm actually looking into getting one of those shredders where you can just put it in and it will shred, but um, you can definitely recycle it. So then all of the packaging um, for the most part is recyclable. Oh no. <laughs> so sometimes this happens as well. The box probably just um, hit something, <laughs> yeah. but um, it's a very low damage rate that I found in general with my last two orders on these. But this particular box just had a large number that didn't work out too well, unfortunately. And I usually like to write out what I am doing. So today I was trying to figure out which of these fragrances I actually wanted to use because I have so, so many. And um, so I'm just writing out all the names of my candles that utilize these fragrances that you saw earlier. And then I'll kind of decide from there. Um, I make these in batches of nine, so I find that one of those uh, pouring pitchers uh, will hold about 50 ounces of wax and makes nine of my eight ounce, uh, 10, six ounce candles. So when you see on here, I'll have like times two, or I'm trying to figure out with these, uh, how many batches. Times two means I'm making two batches of nine or 18. For most of these, since I have so many scents, I'll just start out with 9 or 18 and usually um, do a couple of restocks uh, throughout the winter season if they sell out. And a lot of these fragrances do um, tend to be very popular. At the bottom here, I usually just like to write what my total number is. So. Today, I think I ended up making a little bit more than what I planned on originally, but I'll write my number of batches and then I'll write my total number of candle tins and I usually will prepare one or two extras just so that way I, um, if something happens, I have a backup, which is, I would highly recommend doing. Um, saves yourself a lot of trouble. And then I will start pouring out my fragrance oils usually next. And this is one of my favorite parts. You all know I'm, I'm totally obsessed with fragrances. It's my passion and uh, joy. And so I have these beakers that I've talked about a lot and I will try to link them below, but I really recommend using glass for this because if you use plastic, I find that some of the fragrance can um, not quite clean all the way out of the plastic. So if you do use, you know, like pet plastic, um, or polypropylene would be fine as well. Um, you could do that safely, but you might want to just reuse the same fragrance and container. This uh, mistletoe that I just poured out is one of my best sellers. Um, I sell it as my mistletoe kiss candle, and I do prefer it uh, to Fraser Fir. 
And Marshmallow Fireside, so I am going to be replacing this one by Aztec with the uh, Candle Sciences. I believe it's called Campfire Marshmallow, just because it does tend to throw a little bit better in my soy wax. I use 464 soy for all of these candles. Some of you had asked if I make the tins with my beeswax, soy, and cocoa cream wax blend. And I do use a separate blend for the, the tin candles, just because the high amount of beeswax... Um, can sometimes get a little bit hot, but I may play around a bit more with wicking and see if I can um, do something a bit different. Um, but I will be sharing that blend with you all very soon on what I use for my wood wick tins. I do use beeswax, soy, and cocoa cream, but it's a different blend uh, slightly. And I'm actually, I think I over poured this one a little bit. <laughs> it helps if you have a pipette too, if you're doing very fine um, uh, measurements. For me, I'm working in ounces, I'm doing larger quantities, but uh, if you're doing a smaller quantity, definitely investing in some pipettes. Um, I'll try to have some linked below as well. They're very inexpensive. Wouldn't recommend reusing them though. Some people do, but uh, <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it. And so this is the Moroccan Cashmere. This fragrance um, I don't care for. I do remake it just for a few customers who will buy like three or four of them at a time because they love it so much. And then the Wassail. Um, Wassail is one of my best sellers generally. Uh, it's a classic holiday spice fruity type of a fragrance. It's like a mold wine if you're not familiar. Um, it's kind of an age-old classic um, beverage around the holidays for a lot of people. And this one throws very well in my soy, um, my 464. Most of the fragrances that I use do. There are some exceptions to that. Uh, the last one we just did, the Campfire Marshmallow, uh, definitely would be an exception. But most Campfire Marshmallows just tend to be lighter, I would say, in general. But the Campfire Marshmallow from Candle Science is a little bit better than the Marshmallow Fireside I found from Aztec. Cinnamon and vanilla is an interesting one. Um, I don't know if any of you are familiar with using it, but it's one that I think smells more like a cinnamon bun than cinnamon and vanilla. So I actually market mine that way as Cinnabun. Frasier Fur is a classic as well. It's uh, usually most people's bestseller. Oh, and yeah, the balsam fur from the Flaming Candle is, in my opinion, a spot on dupe. So if you do order more uh, from the Flaming Candle, that's a good one to just grab if you need some more Fraser fur or vice versa if you need more of your flaming candle balsam fur. <laughs> and this fragrance, uh, it's called Winter by Aztec. It's very similar to the Christmas Hearth if you've smelled that one by Candle Science. I love these little spouts that Aztec puts on their bottles. I'm definitely too lazy to add them to all my other bottles that are not Aztec, but they can be really useful. You can always just pour down a chopstick as well. Um, and I'm actually trying a blend of these two fragrances because the Winter from Aztec has less powder to it, but it doesn't throw as strongly um, as the Candle Science Christmas Hearth. So here are all of our oils for today. Oh my goodness. I didn't record pouring every single one, but yes, this Ice Vanilla Woods is a new fragrance for me this year. And the flannel is just a classic um, as well. And I'm really excited. I can't wait for all these scents to fill my home. I just love making um, winter candles. And then I'm gonna grab my 464 here. And this is where I store all of my 464. And I fill this pot to the brim. <laughs> and then I'm just going to make out some little um, post-its for my beakers. So that way I know which one is which and I don't have any question. Usually I wouldn't need this, but just to be extra cautious, since there are a lot of fragrances today, um, I thought I would make some Christmas colored little post-its to remind myself um, which one is which. And then I plan to transfer these to the pouring pitchers and the candles as well. So the way that I have these arranged is I try to put the, the fruity scents, the kind of clean textile scents, the tree-like scents, and the um, gourmand fragrances all in one column. 
So each of the columns you can see um, have, you know, those scents. And then I've got all my clean pitchers here. And um, I always like to start with clean pitchers. Um, and I will end up reusing them though for similar fragrance families, just like I kind of had arranged them. And just so you can see, these post-it notes go right onto the pitchers. Uh, this is something kind of new that I've just been doing the last couple of times I've made candles, but it's been very useful when you're making really big batches, just so you know exactly what is what and you have no confusion whatsoever. And I'm already ready for a refill. Oh my goodness, this is crazy. I've got a lot of wax though. What I'll usually do is just kind of pour slowly, very slowly, um, when the wax is melted. So otherwise, you'll end up splashing a lot of hot wax, and that just isn't very fun. Trust me, I've done it. And you can see kind of my setup from an aerial view here. <laughs> I stand on a chair to do this um, and just kind of do my best. Sometimes there is some that spills. There's probably a better container I could use, but. So we're going to let that melt and then I just put my lids off to the side, um, just wanted to show you how I store those. And I know I say this like a broken record, but I always use stick thermometers when I'm trying to get those really precise measurements of temperature. And I find that the temperature that you add your fragrance oil is really important. Uh, to stick close to that 185 or whatever your wax manufacturer recommends, but uh, for 464, 185 is going to be your magic, magical number. As I was mentioning in a previous video, I usually try to get two of these going at once, and that just gives me a little bit more. Um, for you know, my time stirring, I'm able to kind of double that, but definitely wouldn't recommend this unless you're pretty seasoned and are wanting to try it. So get them both going right about the same time and then stir them both for a full two minutes with 464. And the Woodland Snow, I did end up renaming it to um, Moonlit Snow and I'm really, really happy to have that fragrance in my line. It's one of Candle Science's new scents, I believe. This next one that I'm gonna do here is the Peppercorn Promender. And this is a fragrance that I don't like either. Um, it's for the same client, actually, that loves the, um, the Alpine Balsam and a couple of the other ones that I'm just not as into. She really, oh the Moroccan Cashmere is another one. <laughs> and I'm checking all these pictures just to make sure that I'm in the right category um, because I'm reusing after I poured obviously the same pictures if they're within that same column. I never find that there's cross-contamination as long as you're within the same scent family. Candy Apple Snow is what I call Winter Candy Apple BBW Type um, by Aztec. And I find with this fragrance that um, a couple of years ago when I was getting it, it was a lot stronger, it seems like. And when I repurchased it, it uh, doesn't seem like it's quite as strong. So I'm wondering if um, there's anything that's changed with it. But I really love this fragrance. So when I grew up, Winter Candy Apple from Bath & Body Works was one of the scents that my mom really liked that my sister and I um, also really liked. And that was rare. Usually she liked like more of the gourmand fragrances. When I was younger, I wasn't into gourmands at all. I have warmed up to them quite a bit, but when I was younger, uh, it was a hard pass. And I loved the fragrances more like my grandma enjoyed, which were the clean fragrances and the more earthy ones, which I still really like. 
Miss Mistletoe Kiss that's going in right now is um, it's one of my all-time favorites of the Christmas season, the holiday season. You can see my scale there sliding about as well. That um, happens. Um, if you've experienced it, you know it just it happens sometimes. Um, even when you clean scrupulously. I always like to keep some paper towel just beside whatever I'm doing because I swear like no matter how careful you are there's always little bits of wax that are on the bottom of the pictures and if you don't clean up constantly it will just get all over and kind of um, create a mess and I am not into that at all. Um, so I always like to keep my, I usually use Mrs. Myers, um, but you can use any all-purpose cleaner or rubbing alcohol, but um, I wouldn't recommend the rubbing alcohol when you have open wax, just because you don't want any of that to accidentally get into your, into your wax. Um, and this probably goes without saying, but when you are cleaning up, um, like I've been doing, you always just want to spray your paper towel um, not your surface directly when you have open wax because you don't really want anything um, getting into that wax. So I'm just getting these last ones here and I did cut out some of the footage just because I think I did more than 20 fragrances. Um, <laughs> it was like a record for me um, all at one time. So last year when I did this, the DG Royal was newer to me and um, so I didn't uh, do as many at once just because I wasn't comfortable with it. And when I pour these candles, um, usually what I will do is keep a paper towel right next to me and just wipe every single time, if not um, every couple of times, you kind of get the feel for it um, as I'm pouring because the wax will tend to go a bit down the side of the pitcher. And I have had some of you ask me, you know, if I've tried pancake dispensers and different things, but I really enjoy the way that I do it, just the old fashioned way. And the kitchen is already starting to smell so amazing. Oh my gosh. So I do have to admit though, with this many candles that I have to open uh, some windows and get a cross breeze. Some people have asked as well about respirators there's a lot of candle makers who do tend to wear them, especially when you're making so many uh, candles and there's just so much potency of fragrance. Because just imagine um, one candle, multiply that by, you know, 100 or 200 and you're sort of burning that many at once when you're making candles because you have all the melted wax. Um, it's maybe not quite the intensity of, of burning them, but it's pretty intense and I never have worn a respirator for this. I do always wear respirators um, generally when I am doing my concrete, when I make concrete vessels because of the fine particles. And I also do wear them when I'm um, doing my spray painting, when I spray coat my some of my labels, my black labels. But for these, uh, with the Soy, the 464, I don't tend to, to feel a need for that. Um, Especially with the fragrances that I select for my line, they are the cleanest um, in the industry. Um, and I'm very, very proud of that. That's something that my customers really love and appreciate. It's funny with the Mistletoe Kiss fragrance though, I've found that people who, maybe they're older or maybe they're uh, single and they're not, um, or they're maybe they're not in a happy romantic relationship, um, they will typically go for the humor with the Douglas fir. Whereas I'll find a lot more younger people will go for the Mistletoe Kiss. And I haven't really surveyed the demographics too extensively, but um, I do seem to find that with those two fragrances, that there's kind of a pattern. And it just has to do with the way that I market them. And then these next ones are the Moroccan Cashmere. This fragrance to me smells like argan oil, if you have smelled that before. To me, it, it really is like identical. 
of that and I'm not as into it, but I do really appreciate how different it is. And like I said, there's several fragrances that I keep in my line just because some of my clients that have been there for years for me um, really, really love the fragrances. And so that's another point that I want to make as well. Um, you may not love all the fragrances in your candle line. Just like a chef or a cook doesn't necessarily love everything that they make or prepare at a restaurant um, or for their family, right? But they may make things just because they have that one sibling or a spouse or a relative that really loves it. And so I don't feel that you should love all of your candles in your line. Um, and I also don't think that all of your customers could love all of your candles. There's definitely going to be scents that are just more polarizing by nature. Patchouli is one of those examples. Um, things with black pepper and kind of those esoteric notes with like the Moroccan cashmere where it kind of has that argan oil note to it or um, some of the more uh, incense-y, earthy type fragrances can be a little polarizing too, depending on um, how you brand them, I find but it's important to just know your clientele, I think, and what they love, and you'll have some that you love, some that they love, and some overlap. I am excited to share with you all at the end of this video the um, sort of final effect of these candles. You're going to get to see my new labels and how these turn out with the crystals. So definitely um, stay tuned till the end because I'm really excited. This was a record for me and the DG Boils have been such a game changer in making that possible. Um, as I mentioned in a previous video, I'm nowhere near Wayne, um, or sorry, Wade with Black Tie Barn, where he has like a machine that uh, makes... Uh, does part of his candles, which uh, all props to him. I think that's incredible. Um, but yeah, I really love the DG Boils for where I'm at right now. And I actually just purchased my third one. So that's really exciting. Um, I find that if you have one for each type of wax you use, that's kind of reserved for it, that that's really useful. And just so you can all see um, how these ended up with the labels. So they're all... Um, labeled and I kind of know with that placement of the label in the middle of the three rows of three with each type um, what each scent is. Now I can tell um, pretty clearly even the next day but just because there's so many fragrances that are similar and also because the cold throw is still um, developing um, with soy wax you will uh, with most soy waxes, uh, especially 464, you'll get a very great cold throw. Um, but generally that does take a few days at least to develop. And then here we've got the warning labels. And if any of you would like a video, um, so you can see up close here, if any of you would like a video on how I make these and what you need to have on them legally, uh, please let me know. I'm sure that there are other videos on this already, which is why I haven't really found a need, but I'm happy to do that if any of you would like. And then these are some of my labels coming out of the printer. I do tend to print these fresh almost every time I make candles, just because I'll tweak little things with my labels, and um, I don't like to have, I found, too many at once of um, in, in stock. Like last year, for example, I was using Allen Handcrafted on a lot of my products. Now I just use that on my wick trimmers and on the signature on my wood wick jars. Yeah, I'm so happy with how these labels have come out. And the lighting here is not the best, so this was taken at night. Um, I think that they look really nice on the candles. And then after placing the crystals, I will just go through with a creme brulee torch with um, some goggles. You always want to wear goggles if you do this. And I would recommend starting with a heat gun, not a creme brulee torch, just because um, the crystals, they won't burn. But when they are scorched with that um, creme brulee heat, little tiny bits of them can pop. And um, it's something that you want to 
be really comfortable with and careful with um, before you start to do it. And a heat gun will really help to mitigate that and just keep that temperature down for you. And this torch will run out of fuel. So I just purchased butane that's made for the specific torch. And you just have to let the air out of it first once it's cooled down. Press that in there and then just flip it over and let it rest for a while. And while I'm waiting for that, I'm going to add my golden lipidolite mica to these candles. And I, this is my signature finish. Um, the whole thing is kind of my signature look for my candles, but the mica, I really like that hand ground effect as my signature finish for the tops on these candles. And some people have asked um, where I purchased the mica. Um, I get it from a place called Rough Stone Rocks, and I have tried to uh, see if they still have it, but I don't think it's been in stock for a while, unfortunately. Um, but uh, there's lots of, you know, sources of mica that you can get, but usually it's finely ground. And then once my torch is cooled off from that butane, uh, butane refill, I will go ahead and start using it again. I like to wait a good five to ten minutes, though, for it to just kind of rest after I've given it that refueling. And I just kind of go around the edges of these. I do tend to melt the whole front surface, though. Um, the learning curve, though, is the wick. So you don't want to set the wick on fire. But this is the final effect of these candles. And um, I'm so happy with how these turned out. Um, I've been making this collection with a lot of these fragrances for the last three years. But this, like I said, was my record with the number. And um, I'm going to show you all, once I get the top labels on these, what they all end up um, turning out like. The Douglas fir um, is such, it's such a fun one. So I actually named that after a talking fir tree that my sister and I used to um, have at my grandma's house at Christmas time. And um, so it was a really special kind of memory. But oh my god, the kitchen just smells amazing. And I'm going to uh, let these just firm up a little bit more before I pop the lids on them. Usually about an hour after I've heated them and that wax looks hard is when I'll go and add the lids. And with these tins, um, the lids do close on the inside. So you want to just not fill too high. Um, and this is the final effect with the top labels. And I absolutely love how these labels come out. I know a lot of people like to use laser printers, and I have a laser printer, but I have not found that it can give me the image quality that a good inkjet can for these um, types of image quality uh, graphics and labels that I want. And uh, again, I'm in no way a graphic designer or a printing expert, so I could be very wrong in that, but I've had very good success with my little HP Envy. I think it's the 6055 for printing these labels. And I do have a whole video on my process for printing them. But um, yeah, the images are all from Adobe Stock. And you can also use like Shutterstock, but basically stock photography websites where they have images that photographers have taken and you are just paying for the rights to use those images on your products. Um, I found that that's the best way to get a really professional looking image um, on my candles. But this is just kind of my aesthetic. And yours could be very different or much more uh, minimalistic where you just like line art maybe or um, you know something much more simple. And I wanted to mention as well that the ink plan that I have through HP um, makes this so affordable. So I only pay about $6 per month and I get, I want to say like 100, uh, maybe it's, I think it's 100 pages for that per month. And so it's about six cents per page. But if you just use that for your labels and you do your other printing, if you have a second printer, um, that's what I do and, and it works really well. And then they send you the ink and they also send you in the mail a, um, a way that you can recycle your cartridges, which I really like. So you can just ship them back for free and recycle the cartridges. But these candles, I am so excited with how these turned out. Look, so this is the Irish cream coffee. Um, it uses that scent from the flaming candle. Definitely a lighter thrower. Um, 
but this is the Peppermint Patty, which is North Pole by the Flaming Candle. This has been in my line since the beginning, and it's very popular in general. Um, I will say that Peppermint Eucalyptus by Candle Science does tend to sell better. And then this is the Flaming Candles Flannel, and this is something that I'll never discontinue from my line. I just adore, adore this fragrance, and this is a really strong thrower. It's a great one for that citrusy, clean, and cozy vibe. And then, as I mentioned earlier, the Mistletoe Kiss is the Mistletoe Fragrance by Candle Science. It's a fantastic thrower. And my Douglas Fir is, again, the Fraser Fir by Candle Science. And I always have to do this one in red and green, just reminiscent of the talking fir tree that my sister and I played with. And Snowdrift is um, the one that I'm going to be using the um, French Bourbon Reserve 4 by Midwest. Um, I didn't like how these turned out this year. I won't actually be selling any of the Snowdrift candles, unfortunately. Um, and then the Peppercorn Pomander is just the Candle Science fragrance for that. Um, Dolce de Leche is one that is also the Candle Science Dolce de Leche, but I find with this oil it's very viscous, so you want to add the fragrance at a little bit of a higher temperature so that it combines. And then Marshmallow Fireside is um, by Aztec but uh, I will be switching for that one to the Flaming Candle. And the Candy Apple Snow is also by Aztec. It's the Winter Candy Apple. And I love that fragrance. I just wish it were a little bit stronger. Um, and I loved this image for the Moroccan Cashmere. Love that top label by Candle Science. Um, oh, you can almost touch it. <laughs> and the Cinnabon, I want to bite right into this label. So let's see if I can get it to, there we go. Um, I love, love, love that photo. And I tend to just put my business name on the top labels as well. But anyways, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment down the, at the bottom of what candles you're making um, for this winter season. I'm sending everyone so much peace, love, and light. And I'm wishing all of you happy holidays and happy candle making. I'll end with this beautiful photo of our first snowfall um, of 2022. It was pretty crazy.